standing on a scrape line. We had a great encounter just a few days ago. Big old wide eight came in and really put on a show working the scrape line. Right now we're in that pre-rut phase. There's a very small percentage of does receptive and bucks are using scrapes as a communication hub. But every day there's gonna be more and more receptive does. So this is prime time to be monitoring scrapes over the next few days. Based on our observations of this buck working the scrape line and knowing scrapes are hot, we decided to come out today and put up a Moultrie Mobile Edge Pro. Scrapes can be a great way to monitor which bucks are in the area. That's definitely one way we use scrapes, especially during the pre-rut where bucks are moving quite a bit. Maybe a buck has shifted within its home range and hits a scrape and you've never seen that buck on your trail camera yet this fall. And you wanna be able to ID that buck, get a good idea of what he looks like, what his antlers look like, and maybe even his age. Scrapes can be a great way to slow that deer down on your trail camera to get a great look at that buck to accurately estimate its age. I don't only use scrapes to monitor what deer are in the area, but I also like to take that one step further. How are they using the area? I like to back off that scrape a little bit, and if I can, be perpendicular to that trail or that travel corridor that that scrape is sitting on. That way, whether the deer uses the scrape or not, they may not stop at the scrape. They may travel through that area and actually just smell the scrape, but not actually stop and work it. But if they're traveling through, which direction are they traveling? Are they going north to south or east to west? That information of how bucks are traveling through that little travel corridor, checking that scrape, can be great information for me as a hunter to then back up one side or the other and maybe move in at some pinch point along that travel corridor to harvest that deer. So scrapes allow us to ID bucks, identify them by their antlers. They give us the opportunity to really slow down and study their body characteristics. And they can allow us to better understand how deer are traveling through the area. With these three things in mind, it's really important we get our framing right. We want enough space above where those antlers are gonna to be to make sure we can accurately identify that buck and see his antlers in full frame. A lot of times we may get too close and that buck we know is gonna come in with his head up. If those antlers are out of frame, he could work that scrape right in front of your camera and you never get a great look at his antlers. You may not know exactly which buck is using the scrape. I also don't want to set the camera too far away from the scrape. If it's too far, when that deer comes in, he may look kind of small in frame and we may not be able to estimate its body characteristics accurately. When he's out there a ways, it can be tough to see some really telling characteristics. I say body characteristics and that's why it's really important to be perpendicular to that scrape. If that scrape is on a trail and we're running parallel or looking down the trail, that deer could come in head on or tail to us and we can't see those body characteristics that we need to see to estimate its age. Another thing I like to do at scrapes is to change the settings of the camera. I'll put it on a zero delay. I don't want any time delaying between each individual picture or video that's being taken. And that allows that deer to work around if he does come in head on or tail to us to get a couple different pictures or videos because he's likely going to be there for some time working that scrape and he may turn and give us a good angle and then we can really study those body characteristics. Now if I'm on a food plot or a small hidey hole plot and I know there's deer coming in and they're head down feeding you know for 10-15 minutes I'm going to probably back that delay off a little bit to save our battery life. But being able to change that in settings and get that zero delay and get that buck working that scrape so I can get all those angles, that's a great feature I like to change up on the settings. All this boils down to our trail camera placement being perpendicular to the scrape, how we, we think that trail runs, how deer are gonna come in, and our framing. That's one reason I really like the Edge Pro. It has that live aim feature and I can just before I even leave the camera site, I can double check my frame 
and make sure I have enough padding up top to see those antlers, see those body characteristics, and see how that deer is coming and going from the scrape site. Monitoring scrapes can be great information. Not only what deer are in the area, how they're traveling through the area, but if more does are becoming receptive where you hunt. If scrape activity starts dropping drastically, you know there's likely more receptive does in the area and they don't have to check scrapes anymore. They're just going through the woods, trying to cut a trail and find a receptive doe. Monitoring a scrape can also tell you, hey, it's time to not be hunting around scrapes, but change up your hunting strategy as you get closer to the peak of the rut. Get outside this weekend, put your trail cameras up, start looking for some fresh scrapes, new sign, and no matter what, slow down, listen to the creator and the purpose he has for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.